Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Now, regular viewers of this channel cannot have failed to notice that I do not have a particularly high opinion of the German Tier 7 battleship, the Gneisenau. In fact, I'm not a huge fan of the mid to higher tier German battleships as a whole due to the lamentable accuracy of their main battery guns. Well, today, Red Rackham's here in the Tirpitz, the German Premium Tier 8 battleship, gets his chance to say, actually jungles, as he takes the Tirpitz out for a spin in this Tier 8 domination battle here on the trap map. Now, to be clear, I don't think the Tirpitz is a bad ship. Actually, I don't think the Gneisenau is a bad ship. I think the Gneisenau is actually a pretty good ship. It's just a pretty good ship with god-awful, terrible guns. It's kind of like the polar opposite of the Vermont, the American Tier 10 standard type battleship, one of the Tillman designs. It's an absolutely terrible ship, but with amazingly good guns. And I'll take good guns over good ship any day of the week, because at the end of the day, World of Warships is a game about ships shooting other ships. So having good guns is kind of important. Even though, ironically enough, for at least the last two years, I don't think this game has ever not had some kind of artillery aiming or shooting bug <laughs> of one type or another. Oh, Rackham's has spotted himself an enemy Auber. Really? You're going to chance your luck at this kind of range? With German guns? <laughs> okay. Well, why not? All right, I guess even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day. That's a good start. Opens up with a Citadel on an Alba. I should probably mention matchmaking here, by the way, because it isn't perfect, but it's about as good as you can ever reasonably expect to get. For a start, he's top tier. There's only one, I mean, there is a carrier in play, but it is only tier six, although it's the spotting that the carrier is going to do that's going to be problematic rather than the damage. Uh, no submarines and only one destroyer. Lots and lots and lots of juicy cruisers for him to shoot at with these 15-inch armor-piercing shells. And while the Tirpitz does not have the most accurate guns in the world, they are at least not as hilariously inaccurate most of the time <laughs> as the same guns on the Gneiser now at Tier 7. And it gets two more of them. So it's throwing more shit at the wall. Oh yes, the Chapayev, definitely. I mean, either of those targets would have been good. These are 15-inch armor-piercing shells that can overmatch the bow armor. Um, but the Chapayev is given a better chance of scoring a Citadel and, eh, well, whatever. Eight shots fired, three hits. The range wasn't great, though, so, you know, this is fine. Now, it's not that he's coming around the corner of this island here alone against a whole bunch of enemies. There is a Helena with him, but you can't expect the Helena to stick his neck out. And any other support, well, basically there's a New Mexico back there, but the New Mexico is slow as shit, which means that the battle that is about to unfold is probably going to be over and done with long before the New Mexico can do anything about it. So at best, Red Rackhams can maybe expect to get some support in the form of some six-inch high explosive shells from the Helena a kilometre or two to his south. Other than that, he is on his own here against what might be four or five enemy ships, starting with the Auber, who clearly did not learn his lesson the first time. And there's one. <laughs> I can only assume, and judging by the way he's turning in, Red Rackhams is assuming this too, I can only assume that the Auber thought that that was worth it in order to get his torpedoes away. I mean, he was in cover behind the island. He deliberately chose to come out and broadside in front of a turbine at a range of less than 10 kilometers. Where are the torpedoes? Yep, there they are. The turbine doesn't get hydro, which is unusual amongst German battleships at this kind of tier. But um, you don't need hydro to know when somebody was suiciding in order to get torpedoes away. Ooh, ooh. The shores. <laughs> yes, the shores. The Shores is the kind of ship that you really should be using as a long-range HE spanner because it doesn't have any armour. 15-inch <laughs> armour piercing can and will, said the Dalek from the front, and even the Turbits can't miss at this kind of range. 
The Shawls also has torpedoes, of course, but they are very, very short-range torpedoes, and he is inside torpedo range, but the Shawls is not trying to suicide in order to get the torpedoes away. He didn't have the firing angle. He was instead trying to angle away, but, well, he was way too close in a hilariously badly armoured cruiser, so that was never going to work out for him. That just leaves the Normandy and the Synop. Now, the Normandy's not a great battleship, but at this kind of range, if you expose broadside to it, it can still punish you. The Synop is a good ship, and he's angled well. And Red Rackham's knows he's never going to be able to punch through the Synop's bow armor, but he might be able to take his guns out. Oh, there's the... Did you see that? I'm sorry, we need to watch that again in slow motion. Let's just wind the clock back. And this is what I'm talking about. German battleship guns. Here we go. Ready? At a range of three kilometers, shots from the same gun turret are <laughs> landing hundreds of meters apart. Yes, that's right, shoot. That was shit. <laughs> However, the Tirpitz has a trick up its sleeve, as does the Gneiser now at tier 7. And it's one of the redeeming features of the Gneiser now, but on the Tirpitz it's just another thing that it can do. The Tirpitz has torpedoes, and the Synop is obviously aware of that. He's having another attempt at knocking out the Synop's gun turrets, because he, he can't really afford to give too much broadside to the Normandy. I mean, angled like that, he can tank the Normandy's armor-piercing shots, because the Turbot is a tough old girl, but this is a lot of firepower. He's down to less than half health after using the heal. He's now down to about a third health. He really does need to take the Synop out first, while being very, very careful not to expose broadside while doing so. So there go the torpedoes. Knocked out one of the Synop's gun turrets. That's the Synop not having a good day. There go the torpedoes on the other side. Two torpedo hits. He's going to need to finish the Synop off. This does mean exposing broadside to the Normandy. But, can the secondaries do it? No, the secondaries of this range are just slapping straight into the Synop's armor belt, not doing any damage. So he's going to have to use the guns. There it goes. Survived by the skin of his teeth. Pops the damage control. He was on fire. Torpedoes against the Normandy. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> and that's the double strike. <laughs> the high caliber and uh, four kills. Wow. <laughs> you know, I can remember when the Tirpitz and the Gneisenau first came out. Battleships with torpedoes. Nobody expected battleships to have torpedoes. And, oh, really, Chapayev? <laughs> I mean, the range isn't fantastic, but hey, why the hell not? Yep, there it goes. <laughs> That's another citadel. <laughs> and now the carrier. I mean, it's just a Ryujo, it's only tier 6, but he's on low enough health that he really can't afford to take another fire. And, yeah, the Chapayev knows this as well. He's trying to duck into cover behind the island while keeping up the HE spam. But at this kind of range, you can actually loft the shots over the island. And... anything? No, no, didn't hit the Chapayev. Unfortunate. The Chapayev could be a problem. He's lucky enough to not be suffering another fire, yet. Although his damage control will be available again in 10 seconds. He's definitely going to have to deal with... Well, the problem here is the carrier who's spotting him. Hmm. Then again, the Chapayev has ducked behind the island far enough to avoid dying. That, um... It's only really the carrier who's in a position to do anything. And why is the... You know there's a turbot here, right? Why are you sailing towards the turbot? Oh dear. The turbot does have very good secondaries, by the way. I mean, we're not talking quite Massachusetts standards of great secondaries, but they are pretty good. Extreme range, fast rate of fire, and a talent activated that makes them reload even faster He's going to have to take care of the carrier. Oh, and judging by those armor-piercing shells going in, it looks like the New Mexico down to the south is finally able to start shooting at something. Day late and a dollar short, of course, but, well, that's the New Mexico for you. The Helena's also in range and helping out with a bit of high explosive, but, yeah, I mean... It's not like that carrier is making things difficult for them. He is sailing straight towards them. He's also elected to try a frontal attack against the narrowest possible target profile. 
on Red Rackham's Tirpitz. There's the Kraken unleashed. The Torpedo's missed. And Red now has a chance to go undetected. He's managed to recover some health. And he has been pretty lucky in that none of those ships spamming him, like the Chipayev over there, who is about to be kill number six, unless I'm very much mistaken, none of them managed to set a fire. Although even if they do at this stage, his damage control is back off cooldown, and there is kill number six. But yeah, as I was saying before the carrier interrupted us, when ships like the Tirpitz and the Gnais now first came out, nobody expected battleships to have torpedoes. And so it was not uncommon in the first couple of weeks to see Tirpitz and Gneisenau captains looking for opportunities where they could sail down the middle between two enemy ships and torpedo and kill them both at the same time. That was years ago, though. <laughs> People are supposed to be wise to that sort of trick by now, so the fact that Rackham's was able to pull that off against the Normandy and the Synop is actually pretty impressive. Oh, can he get the Sherborg? Uh, well, I mean, the range wasn't great. The fact that he managed to hit it at all is pretty impressive. Oh, hang on a second. The Shinonomi. Now, that's a... It is only tier 6, but it's a pretty nasty tier 6 destroyer. So he's focusing the secondaries on it. It's gone undetected for the moment. But if it pops up again, the secondaries are already pre-selected. And the Turbits does have very good secondaries. This is probably worth mentioning. I mean, the Gneiser now's secondaries aren't bad. And the Turbits' secondaries are pretty good. They're not quite up to the same standard as something like the Massachusetts, but they're not bad at all. I think he popped the depth charge attack planes there in order to troll the Shinonomi and to open it up with its anti-aircraft guns. I'm not sure whether that worked or not, but there is the Shinonomi. He is being hit by the secondaries, but it was the main battery guns that finished him off, and there is kill number seven. He is very, very low on health here, though. The enemy team, by the way, are down to 168 points. And Red Rackham's team is about to reach 900 with two of the three caps. Oh, could this possibly be kill number eight? Oh, come on. Come on. Yes, Sherborg, thank you for your service. <laughs> there are the Shinonomi torpedoes. The enemy team are down to 127 points. Uh, the Massachusetts probably has the advantage. Well, it definitely has the advantage. It's got all the health. It's got good 16-inch guns and it has amazing secondaries. It could actually be a serious problem for Red Rackens. Unless, of course, his team reaches a thousand points, which they are about to do. And his secondaries, of course, are also continuing to rack up some damage. He just has to stay alive, wait for the team to reach a thousand points, and walk away with a win. The, oh, that was close. The enemy team almost bought themselves a bit of breathing space there. Oh, nice broadside on the Massachusetts. Shots out. And we'll not find out whether or not the Massachusetts would have survived that because the team just reached a thousand points. And Red Rackham's wins. With eight kills, he was generous enough to allow one other member of his team to sink something. <laughs> During the course of that battle. 251,000 damage, 900,000 credits, and nearly 15,000 experience earned. A couple of complete non-surprises here on the post-battle results screen. Since he did get eight of his team's nine kills, it's totally not surprising to see that Red Rackham's finished with almost triple the amount of base XP as the next best scoring member of his team. And if you have a look at the enemy team, when you see that a Pensacola <laughs> was the top scoring member of the enemy team, it's probably no surprise to anybody that the enemy team did in fact lose in quite a spectacular fashion. And for those of you who are wondering, because somebody always is, yes, his secondaries did do a lot of damage. 67,000. More than three times as much as his torpedoes. And yes, I know, the matchmaking, while not perfect, was as good as you could reasonably expect to have. And yes, I know, certain ships on the enemy team, the Carrier, the Alba, uh, the Shores, the Chapaev, they didn't exactly make things difficult for him. And under these circumstances, it's not unusual to see people saying, well, sure, I mean, if I had that ship with this matchmaking against that enemy team, I'd be able to do well too. And yeah, you would, or you should, but there's doing well, and then there's doing eight kills and a quarter of a million damage in ten minutes well, right? <laughs> I mean, they're playing the same sport, 
but they're not in the same league, if you know what I'm saying. So well done, Red Rackhams. Extremely well done. Uh, very aggressive play there. Mostly unsupported, and you came perilously close to dying on a couple of occasions. But the Turbot is a tough old girl, and she does have it where it counts, if used well. So I hope you all enjoyed that one. Congratulations once again, Red Rackhams, for a spectacular result. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.